Right, Righto guys, welcome back to another episode. This one is gonna be all about the outside of this big rig over here. That's the new van. This is our first trip in it, hey? We picked it up from Kiwana at Sunseeker. We made it about 50 Ks and we stayed at Noosa for 11 weeks, babe. 11 weeks in lockdown. And uh, not that we're complaining, it was bloody nice. But now this is the first trip out. We've come a couple of hours away to a place called Land Cruiser Mountain Park. And what better way to show you all about this off-grid, off-road kick-ass van, hey? Let's go. I'm gonna pass you on the camera to my beautiful wife. Hello, dear. Hello. Oh, oh, you missed, that was shocking. Do a good one, here we go. Anyway, so uh, I'll run you through the specs of this thing, what we've included, and uh, you might be able to learn a bit about it. So here you go, dear. Thanks, eh? All right, I'll come and sit down first. I'll give you a bit of a campfire chat. So, um, through this vid, I'm gonna run you through a few things that we use that we can offer you a discount on. So we go above and beyond and we try our hardest to work with people along the way and I sort of line you guys up with discounts as well. So we love having a cool audience that watches our vids. We couldn't do what we do without an audience that actually enjoys what we do. So our way of trying to give back to you is to work with people and create a bit of a discount on products that we use along the way. So. I'll drop some links in along the way and point that out as well. Um, and hopefully, it'll help you out. Because that's about all I can do. I don't know how else to help you out other than info and, I don't know, a bit of a good time along the way. But we'd like to give back to you. So, let's go. Come around here. We're going to start at the front. I went the wrong way. I'll start at the front of the van and work my way back and try not to forget anything. So, check her out. It's a Sunseeker Desert Storm. It's a 21 foot 6 bunk van and it's built for off-grid, off-road living. That means we've got heaps of power, battery, solar, and heaps of payload. So let's go through it. Start at the front. On the very front is the Cruise Master DO45. So we've always had the DO35, which is a three and a half ton hitch from Cruise Master. This one is 4.5 ton, hence the 45 rating. So same sort of setup, it's a little bit different. Uh, I'll let you in on a bit of inside info. They've got a new one coming out soon that we'll show you as well. Uh, heavy duty chains, big ass chassis from FP Chassis. Now swing in here Beck, because you'll notice that it's all plated 4,500. Which means this caravan all together can weigh 4,500 kilos. Tear weight, which means what it weighs empty with its battery and solar and everything without our stuff in it, is just under three tonne. So we have 1,500 kilos to play with. That is mind blowing. I don't think we'll ever get it to four and a half tonne, but it required the same amount of work and engineering to get it to four tonne as it would to four and a half. So why not just go the maximum? That's why we're always covered, you know? So with more water, more battery, more solar, we're always gonna be heavier. And I've got the capability now. I've never had more than three and a half tonne towing with the Mazda. Now I've got four and a half towing with the Cruiser. Let's just max it out, make it all set up sweet. So anyway, four and a half tonne, DO45, breakaway controller. Uh, it's standard on most vans now. That pulls off the back of your car. This pulls out, your brakes will apply in your van. It's a safety device to try and stop your van running away. Uh, we run a standard 12 pin flat. That runs all our lights and our brake controller. And we also run a 50 amp Ando. So that comes from the car. By Ando, I mean Anderson plug. Um, and that is a good way to transfer current and not lose voltage drop through some decent cable. And that way the DC to DC charger comes from the alternator. It runs all the way down here, about seven and a half meters to the charger inside. And it gives us 40 amps plus current while we're driving the car. Um, jockey wheel, yep, Alco, standard. Uh, stone guard, nice couple of mud flaps. This is great protection. We had a stone guard in the last van and it works a treat. I've heard a lot of stories about um, if you're driving a wagon with a rear windscreen, that you might get some rocks flicking back and you can smash your windscreen. Now, yeah, I can understand that. I don't know if it's true or not because we've never had one. We've always had a canopy when we've had a stone guard. But there's other options. You can run rock tamers or you can run stone stompers as well. Swing through here, babe. Um, we'll talk about this. We get asked this a lot. Uh, four and a half kilo gas bottles. So we don't run nines because we've spent a lot of money on an off-grid capable battery system we don't use a lot of gas. So our fridge is a two-way, which means it's just a compressor fridge, 12 volt, 240. Uh, and the only thing we use gas for really when we're free camping is either hot water for showers 
or if we use the cooktop, but generally we use the induction cooktop as well off the battery system. So that's why we run four and a half kilo bottles, uh, which means we're not just carrying extra weight on our drawbar, uh, and which or just adds to our table weight, you know? So that's why we run four and a half kilo for everyone asking. Big toolbox up the front. For us, that is brilliant. We've never had one because we've never had an extended drawbar. Now, uh, we thought it was just easy enough just to like, oh yeah, can we just put an extended drawbar on any van? Well, you can, but what it does engineering wise, it, it decreases your ATM. So you really have to think about that uh, and figure out how much payload you want because every sort of foot longer your drawbar goes, your ATM or your payload goes down. So it just means you have to beef up everything else, which means you end up with a heavier van, which is why this is three ton and such a beast. But it gives us this, a toolbox on front, jerry can holders either side. Now we need this now because if you swing around, here's the tinny. Uh, we need to carry fuel. I don't want to carry fuel on the car all the time. So I can put two jerry cans here and I can either have water here if I need it, but we don't because we've got plenty underneath but I can run extra fuel for the boat because we're going to go and park up in some cool destinations this year where we just fish and fish and fish. Much to my little wife's, um, she's pretty happy about that, isn't she? <laughs> you can't hear her, but she's pretty happy about that. Yeah, are you happy about that, dear? Oh, I'm stoked. <laughs> anyway, on this side, inside, you'll find just a couple of tubs, our hoses, our leads, our impact gun for the legs and a couple of other things like this is our first trip away in the new van, so we haven't quite figured out the layout of where everything's gonna get stored yet, but we've got heaps of room. So we'll, we will figure it out and everything will have its home. Uh, one thing I will show you while we're here, ugh, like I said, we haven't sorted it all out, is a little shower. Like this is a standard thing on a desert storm. Um, it's a flick mixer, hot and cold exterior shower. So all you gotta do is plug this little thing in, little sort of cam fitting, and then you've got hot and cold water. So we've never had one before. We'd usually just run um, the tap on the front of the drawbar and just have a cold shower if we want. But, Don't. no, I won't. So. But there you go, you just plug it in. And if you want to swing it uh, there, it's hot that side. And you swing it this side and you've got cold. So it's super easy. And you just, it's great actually. Like, and then if you're using the barbie, you want to spray something. So we've used it a few times. And uh, it's one of them things, it's a standard thing. So. We just got it. If it was going to be extra, we would have said no. But I'll tell you what, it's pretty handy. Anyway, up north, it'll be good. up north it will be good. And then you just unplug that, flick it down. And then one thing you got to do is pull the trigger and hold it up. Otherwise, it'll leak in your toolbox. That's our shower. Anyway, moving on. At the moment, we've got a swag sitting on the front here. Um, we're yet to decide where the swags are going to live full time because they, they fit under the tinny easy enough, but they also fit on top here. So I'm just trolling a few positions. So we'll sit that on the toolbox for a while now. And we'll just, we'll test it out, see what's gonna be best for us. Uh, at the front is a stone deflector over the front window. So not only that, it stops a lot of sun coming in. So it keeps the van like cooler if you've got it down, if it's a super hot day. But it is really nice to open it up, have a bit of shade, and then you can pop the screen inside and get that airflow. So that's cool, and it stops the stones bashing your windscreen as well. Come around this side, we'll keep going. Um, another jerry can on this side. So again, you can have fuel or water or diesel or whatever you wanted in there. Sits in there, a little chain over the top. Now, the standard toolbox comes with a Jenny slide. If you come around here, back, at the moment, we do have a generator in here. Um, and, it fits like a glove. It's really nice. It fits a 2 kVA generator. Now this is one, like I said at the start, about the discounts we can offer you. Sunseeker are actually selling these through their own brand called ProTrek or their own website. Um, so if you check out the link, you'll get a discount on these sort of things. It is a 2 kVA generator and it's quiet, it's powerful, and it runs on the smell of an oily rag. We give it a test run last night. We started it at 5 p.m. in the Arvo cut out at about 1.30 a.m. but we ran it all night running the reverse cycle aircon on 30 because it was zero degrees here. But anyway, it fits in there nice and neat if you do want to carry a generator. We won't be carrying one full time because we run the off-grid battery system, but we always get asked for recommendations on buying a Jenny. Um, so there you go. It works a treat for us. I'll show you quickly one thing is that you can pull it out. I haven't tied it down, you probably should. 20 kilos, 22 kilos, I'll put it in the specs. But the good thing about it 
is that you can pick it up and roll it around and it's designed to lay like this. So if you don't have a generator box on the front, it's the right exact size for you to lay it down and put it in there. All you have to do is turn the fuel tap off, which I didn't do, of course. So you're supposed to turn the fuel tap off and then you can just lay it flat in your tunnel boot. Pretty handy, eh? Fuel tap, there's a choke and it's electric start. All you have to do is turn it on and hit the little button. It's got a lithium battery that's electric start. Let's move on. We'll leave that there. Front boot on this side, it's a full tunnel boot, right? So I'll show you on the other side when we get around there is the barbecue. I've adapted a little slide for me Weber because uh, if you're gonna use a barbecue when you're traveling, it's gotta be easy. And so it has to be on a slide, it has to be easy to put away and lock and accessible, right? On this side, it's just tubs. Uh, I've got some stuff for the boat. I've got kids stuff, I've got the clothes line. But what is good about this tunnel boot is that it's fully lined with checker plate. So it doesn't matter what size stuff you put in there or whatever else, I just jam it in. If it gets stuck, I'll shove it in. Uh, it's all checker plate. You're not gonna hurt it, right? That's it. Heaps of storage, but one hot tip. Don't put stuff in there that you'd, you wanna access a lot. So try and put that stuff in there. Like my first tubs are full of uh, wet weather jackets and really warm stuff and like Ugg boots and then tools and then um, clothesline and helmets and stuff. You don't want to get, you don't want to be pulling out all the time because it's not the most easy of access. Right, eh? The, uh, the legs, while we're here, they're just, the Alco drop down legs. We've had them on all our vans. Uh, we've never had, we've had a few dramas. They don't like getting belted up with an impact gun. They do tend to strip the gears inside. So be, go easy on them. Don't try and jack your van up with them. Uh, but they do the job if you don't try and expect too much of them. A swift hot water system, it's gas and electric, uh, works a treat. Uh, good tip with that. If you have power, um, try and you can put both on. So if the missus wants to wash her hair and you're on a powered site, put the gas and the electric on and you'll get like longer. You know what I mean? Off the gas, we get about probably 10 to 12 minutes of hot water if you're having a long shower. If you run both, you can probably extend it out to closer to 16 to 18 minutes. It's not too much more because it still pulls the water out of the tank, but it's a good little handy tip. You can flick both on and get extra water. Uh, big windows, massive big windows, one either side, the one at the front too when you want to open it. Awesome for free camping, heaps of air, heaps of light. We love it. You gotta, we basically free camp 70, 80% of the time. So for us to have airflow and big windows is a big part of the function of our van. We love it. Inlet for your mains, so there's your 15 amp inlet for your mains and also for your TV antenna. If you pull up at one of those sites that has an external antenna in the box where your power point is, you can plug into there and you get full like town TV, you know? So under here is an auxiliary socket for a solar panel. So another 50 amp Anderson that runs into the DC to DC charger because it's got its own MPPT controller. Uh, I've got a lead running out. I'll show you our solar panel. We use a portable one from Enerdrive. It's, um, I'll throw the specs in here down below, but best way I can explain it is it's a bit of a hybrid between one of those soft lightweight blankets you get and a portable folding glass panel. So it's got more reinforcing in it, more fiberglass. It's a bit stiffer, a little bit heavier than a blanket, but it's better quality and it cranks the sun in. So if you do need an extra one other than your roof panels, uh, have a look at these, the Enerdrive ones. I'll put the details in below. So while we're on the subject of solar, um, if you go back and check out the interior van vid, we showed you the battery system inside. So inside is a 400 amp hour pro series system. Now, what that is, is something that we've worked with Enerdrive over the years to create. And now uh, we've got a web page set up now to show you all the trip in a van pro series systems. So that info will be down here too. You can choose like what amp hours you want in your battery, what sort of inverter, that sort of thing. Depending on the needs of what you wanna do when you go free camping and off grid, Bush bashing. So in there is a 400 amp hour pro series system. On top is five solar, watt, uh, five solar panels that are 180 watts each, which makes 720 watts. Is that right? Five eighths of 32. That's right. There you go. So 720 watts of solar on the roof feeding into that 400 amps. Now that uh, the biggest thing about off grid camping and lithium uh, and big battery banks is if you use it, you have to be able to recover it or recharge it the next day. So the more solar and the better the DC-DC charger you got from your car, the better off your battery system's gonna be because you can keep it topped up all the time, right?
No. Anyway. Lockable water fillers, let's talk about water. Underneath there is four water tanks, four 85 litre water tanks, uh, and they're split front and rear, two in front of the axle, two behind. And so this will fill the front two, and this will fill the back two, both lockable. And they're both, you, you can select them from the inside if you want to pull from the front or the back, which is handy. Just by a little tap in under the, uh, under the fridge, Sorry, near the pump. Sorry, handy? Because they look like bottled water in one. Yeah, yeah. So if you wanted to run maybe just drinking water in the front one, and you were like, you did a lot of camping where you used creek water or bore water in the back one, that way you could isolate them, you know what I mean? And you wouldn't have to clean all the tanks. Or if you think you're going to get shit water, you could isolate it. Or yeah, it's just handy. And also if you wanted to, uh, if you're worried about your ball weight, you could use all the water in this front tank, which would then leave the water in the back tank, which would sort of offset your ball weight a bit as well. So it's, it's, I think it's a good little function. Big window over the dining area. These hatches here, that's our fridge inside there. So you wouldn't know it. Normally they're like, uh, like a grill, you know what I mean? Like a, just a vent and a panel. Uh, most fridges, they require a lot of airflow to work properly. And this one likes it as well, like all fridges do, but because it's a compressor fridge, it only runs on 12 and 240, you don't need that massive amount of airflow for the gas. And there's a big cavity in behind there. So as you can see, I keep a couple of fittings in there, but there's a big space between here and the hatch and up there, which runs the full length of the wall. And then on top, there's a whirly bird. So you've always got airflow where the hot air can escape. And if you do have super hot conditions, you can pop these vents to get a bit more airflow through, but I don't think I'll need to. And the best part about them is it stops the dust. You know, they're a full marine hatch that is closed and it's gonna stop any dust getting in while you're traveling. I used to spend like 10 minutes taping up our fridge vents before we hit dirt roads. It was a pain in the bum. So now, not no more. Triple bunks, because we got three kids. <laughs> well, I just stood in something gross, that's awesome. Um, nice big windows for the kids, as again, free camping. The bigger the windows, the better. They get nice big airflow. And it's pretty cool for a photo too when they stick their heads out of them as well. So, mains, pressure, right? So this is where you plug your mains pressure in if you're on a, a powered site or if you've got um, town water, you can just plug that in there and it automatically works. And then one thing I wanna show you is that we have got uh, a grey water tank. First time for us. But last year we found that it's not a must, but there is a lot of sites that are starting to request that you have a grey water tank to be able to stay there, which means you need to catch your shower water and your sink water. Um, Cape yeah, Cape Range, and even there was one in Port Hedland, which is a good one, and they'd come around and check and they'd kick you out if you like. They were real. They were really, yeah, no, <laughs> they were really rough. Anyway, uh, so we've got a grey water tank. I think 95% of the time we won't use it. But because we found that the restrictions are starting to tighten, or that you know you need that capability, we've just got one put in from factory. And what that means is we've got an extra tank at the back here. But I'll tell you one thing: we don't want. I didn't want to run it. Didn't want to run all my grey water through the tank all the time because I don't want it to stink. You know, we live in it full time. I don't want all our, you know, your bits of veggies and peas and tuna and whatever else, all the stuff that goes through and will end up in the bottom of your tank. It'll start smelling back up through uh, your plugs and your drains. So what we've got here is a bypass valve, a grey water bypass valve. So here's our normal black water exit, which is all our grey water. Oh, sorry, grey, not black. This one, and then you flick that. So if we want to use the grey water tank, you shut that and then anything coming out of the shower or the sink or the, um, the vanity will hit that and then go up this bit. Come here, bud. Come under here. You're right. No, just quite there. And this pipe here, there's another valve up here. There's just a T-piece. And so it'll hit that back up and then it'll go up the little pipe and fill the grey water tank. And then all I have to do is open that valve to allow it in. Now, normal use, I just leave that shut and I'll leave that open and all our grey water comes out. So it's as simple as that. And then when on the side marine gauge inside, it tells us how much is in our water tanks and it is how much is in our grey water tanks. And then you can just come out here, undo that and drain it into a, a waste disposal point. Or most of the time you can just, where you are allowed to drain it, like in a paddock somewhere, it's just grey water. Like I think, I don't know what they're worried about, but you can just crack it and drain it somewhere else. So there you go. Swing around here. Hey Roo. 
on the back is the bike rack, the rear bumper, the spare tire, and our boat trailer. So it's rated to about 370 kilos, and you can fit heaps of gear on there, plus you can extend it out. There's a lot of length in there, right? On the back here, I've got, because we've got the tinny now, and I need to be able to get it around, I've got a little trailer from Almac, same bloke who does the roof loader, and all you have to do is send him the measurements of your rear bar and how high your spare tire carrier is, and he'll make you up this bracket that can U-bolt onto that, and then your, spare, your whole trailer fits on there, your axle and your wheels, and then your draw bar fits on there, bolts on. It's 38 kilos, uh, but it fits on there so neat, and then you don't have to worry about it. You can just whip it off when you want to use the tinny. Spare tire goes on there, always carry a dirty gear bag. It's priceless, mate, for whatever you want to use. If not only rubbish, but we've got sand toys and snorkels and uh, other stuff all stacked in everywhere. So you need to have a couple of those. I'm yet to get another one for the back of the new car. Um, mate, we always need rubbish bags, it's crazy. Bike rack isn't something standard on a desert storm. Normally they put them on the front toolbox. I don't like that idea, I like to get all the weight up the back. So we had the rear wall reinforced and put a three bike uh, Fiamma bike carrier on here. And then you've also got the work lights at the back. These are cool for security. You can operate them inside with a key fob. Camera up there, you'll notice is a rear camera. We don't use that. It's a standard function on these vans but um, obviously with a bike rack, it's, it's useless. So don't worry about that too much. Anyway, that's the rear of the van. Come around this side, the awning. So same as we've, oh, we have tried other awnings in the past. Um, please don't bother, they're really not worth it. This is the Dometic awning. They just work all the time when you want them to, and they've got quality fittings and fixtures and fabric that'll last like full-time travel. They also go better in the wind and rain and stuff. So. Look for those, a Dometic awning. I'll show you this while we're here because this is something I've always wanted on a caravan is to run uh, tires and rims the same as what's on the ute. So if you swing around here on the ute, uh, 17 by nine inch King wheels uh, with 285-70-17 Cooper tires plus 35 offset. And then the good thing about having Cruise Master is you can pick what you want to run. So on here, I've got identical wheels. I've got the 17 by nines, 285 70 17s and a plus 35 offset and they go straight onto the Cruise Master ATX hubs and then I can switch them out if I want to. I can use the spare off the car on the van or I can use the spare off the van on the car. It's sort of dual purpose and then that way I don't carry two spares on the truck and I don't carry two spares on the van. There you go. Probably should, I don't know, but you sort of, we, I'm only going off experience and what we've done in our own travels over the last four and a half years. We've only Oh, what did we have? We've never had a flat. I had one go down years ago. We picked up a screw in a caravan park, but we've never popped or done a tire off-road or doing anything. So we look after them, we drop our pressures and we drop our conditions. So I think that's the biggest thing. Toilet hatch, we won't have to show you in there. It's just a removable cassette that you can go and use in the dump point. We also carry a spare one. So when you are free camping, you can put um, a full one in the tunnel boot and bang another one in there and get another five or six days wherever you are. This is cool. Come and look at this. This is the control station for the airbag. So I'll show you in a minute, but underneath is the Cruise Master ATX. So it's been a bit of an evolution for us over the years. We started with CRS, which is a country road suspension. Then we went to XT, which is an independent coil suspension. And now we've come to ATX, which is the, the bee's knees or, you know, like the Taj Mahal of off-road caravan suspension. And it's independent airbag, which is all fully remote. And ah, I, always, I never thought you'd be able to feel it that much, but I tell you what, when you tow it, it is different. It is better and it gives the van such a bloody good ride. It's out of control. This is how you control it. And you've got a gauge in here which tells you what's in each side of your airbags. You've got a power switch to turn on your compressor, which works on a pressure switch and it fills the tank up underneath. So I think it's always full of about 150 to 200 PSI of air. And you've got a tank drain so you can drain the, the water out of it. There you go. Anyway, excuse you, dear. And then um, you've got a line out so you can air up with a tire inflation gauge and you've got manual valves. So if you ever have a 12 volt issue or any of the controls fail, you can just still use an uh, uh, air compressor and pump these up to get your bags up. You've also got a 12 volt SIG socket, a couple of USBs, a uh, little point there for your TV antenna, and you can mount your TV on there with its arm. You can swing it off. You just pull it off from the inside and bring it out. 
And there's also a couple of 240 volt sockets there as well, which is handy if you want to run a second fridge or use your induction cooker outside, that sort of thing, which is what we've been doing a lot of the time. Excuse me. And then how do you control your airbags? Well, you set your airbag height by the pressure here, but it's just on a key fob. So the bottom, the bottom one is to deflate. You can see the pressure go down. As you deflate, your airbags go down, your van goes down. And as you inflate, it goes up, and then your compressor cuts in automatically, and up she goes. There you go. Now the good thing about that is that when you're free camping, like we are now, most spots, most of the best spots to camp are always on a bit of a lean or a bit of a lump. Uh, it used to take us ages, we'd find rocks and ramps and everything else and we'd get under there just to get the van level. Now, all you have to do is go up one side, down the other, and the van's level. So I'm stoked with that. Not only that, airbags, well, especially the ATX, doesn't matter what pressure in them, the ride quality doesn't change. So you'll always get the smoothest ride for your van. Table. Just a drop down table. Only thing I'd change about that is if I could get another one somewhere. You know, you can always do with more table space outside. It just... Windows, that's our kitchen. We've got this massive window in our kitchen now. So once Beck starts cooking up a storm on the road, she'll be able to pass me out rum and cokes and cheese and bickies and stuff out the window. I'll be laughing. Uh, keep moving. Step, uh, it's just an aluminium folding step. Slides in and out on a spring. Hot tip, we have had a powered step before and we didn't like it it got like the solenoid or whatever got junked up with dirt and stuff and it never wanted to work we used to have to pull it halfway out anyway so these ones they're cheaper as if you damage them they're only 150 bucks or something you can just bolt another one onto the chassis underneath and they work really well good thing about it is that it helps you see how high our van is g'day mate <laughs> good timing I had the video. <laughs> So I can just step in, it reduces the height rather than having another external step that you have to pull out and get down and climb all the way in. So there you go, door's handy. It's just a split screen door. We've got security one side, external the other. Tinted windows, which is good. And also the blind that comes down. So we've got plenty of security and privacy. A little light here on the entry, so you can press that. You can see where you're doing if you want to get your key in there when you come home when the wine's had no the wife's had a few wines she can come home and find the find the key there hey dear hey anyway <laughs> uh, and here we go we've got heavy duty um latches for the door so it stops it when you're in high winds you can have your door open it's not going to flap around and break this the the little dodgy one that they come with factory so you can have this and you have two positions on your door here i'll show you you can either have it in this position, so you can open your window, yeah? Or, if you're not opening your window, you can have it in this position. So there you go. That's what that is. All like quality stainless marine grade stuff, you can flick that in. While we're here, I forgot about this little, there's a little red button, and that is our wire tie. That's our security system. So don't go thinking you can come and break into our van without anyone knowing, because it will go off its head. Actually, I'll do it now. Have we got the keys? Here we go. So all it is, it's a wire tie system. And again, uh, we've worked with this fellow over the last few years, so we'll be able to get a discount on the system for you. And you shut it, you press the key fob. If you watch this light here, babe, yeah. see that flashes, and then it should flash twice again. There you go. And then that, now that led, that light is red. Sorry, if I can speak. Now that'll go off if anyone tries to break in your van or tow it away. There you go, how good's that? And all you have to do is hit the key fob here, ready? And that'll turn it off. So what that does, it's not only alarm and lights, but all your brakes will come on as well. So if they try and tow it away, all your brakes are locked on. They can't take it. And not only that, anyone within an earshot is gonna go, what's going on over here? So it's good peace of mind, mate. And it'll happen if they try and walk in, even if like, I whacked that and it went off, but if they start to roll, like if they hook up and start to roll away, that will sense the motion and the brakes will come on and the alarm will go off. So it's a really cool system, about five or 600 bucks. Plus, like I said, I can get you a discount. It's really well worth having in your van. This one as well, um, it's the upgraded model from what we had last time. It's got a GPS tracker in it. So you can also see where your van is if they ever do manage to steal it or do something with it. You can always track them as well via GPS. Throw that in. Hey, bub. Righto, now come round to the piece de resistance, I reckon. Best part of the van and I built it. How good is that? 
in the front tunnel boot. You've got to have a barbecue, right? And you would have seen we've always had a Ziggy in the front hatch and that was because the lid flipped over and fit inside and it's easy to use. And it's like this lifestyle is all about easy to use, like fun, accessible, functional stuff, you know? You don't want to be mucking around. Well, this is just personal opinion. I don't want to be pulling tables out, running leads, sitting barbecues on, then having to lock it up at night time so some little rat doesn't steal it from, you know, the town next door, that sort of thing. So I like being able to put everything away and it needs to be easy to use. For me, the barbecue, we eat off it probably 90% of the time. So it needs to be easy. So here we go. A couple of draw slides off eBay from Dunham Watson and a bit of material I had in Dad's shed. And then voila, there's the Weber. And how good's that? Now, come in here and have a closer look. You would have seen, all I've done is cut the legs off on the Weber and mounted them on some angle. Come around this side, you can see it better, babe. Bit of aluminium angle, uh, cut the legs off flush, um, screw them to there on the inside, screw them down to the table, and then there you go. That way, you only have to do that is because it's too high. Otherwise, and uh, you'll have to take the lid off or something just to slide it in. This way, it fits, look at that, coming in. It fits by about six or seven mil, I reckon. And you can just pull it out and use it. Now, um, good thing, yeah, but also, I've retained the factory Weber tray. All I did was cut a hole in this base. So if you swing under, it's a bit rough. It's my prototype model. I plan on um, designing a good one of these and you can all buy one off me if you want. But there you go. It retains that factory grease tray. I can always empty it or I can use the L4 ones, the throwaway ones as well. And then I just swing this around. The gas bayonet is under here. Plug him in and away you go. Lift him up. I've got the bloody, if you didn't know, these don't come standard with the Weber anymore. God, I was angry. I had to pay 60 bucks extra for these side tables. But there you go. So that works a treat. And then all I have to do is when I come out, unplug it, put it away, and then I can shut my hatch and lock it if need be. But no one can ever steal that. No one. So that's, I'm pretty happy about that, if you can't tell. So um, that is our van. I think we're good, eh? What I'm gonna do now, I'll grab this off my dear. Hey? Thanks dear, she's done well. She's been complaining Always. the whole time that her arm's sore, but she's done I well. I do. What? You, you <laughs> try doing that for like 20, 25 minutes. It's all good. Anyway, now Beck's going to crawl underneath and show you about the water tanks. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> no, she's not. I'm going to do it for you. So I'll crawl under here because what I want to show you is the, not only the water tanks, but what um, the big girl rides on, which is the Cruise Master ATX. So let's swing around here. We've got four water tanks. They're roto mold tanks, which are seriously heavy duty but they're not a, i'll show you a good function hang on i'm grunting and groaning and crawling around in here they've got brass um threads and fittings molded into the tanks see this they've got they're all brass threads so they're never you're never going to be able to strip them or destroy them and you can put oh, breathers and bypass hoses and taps and tees or whatever you want into them they're bloody good tanks so i've got one and two in front of the axles right and then you'll swing past here Oh, and you'll see two and three up the back. Now, Cruise Master ATX, you've got dual axle, independent airbag suspension. And not only that, have a look at the remote resi shocks. Look at these, hey? Big M46s, they've got remote oil reservoirs for the shocky, which means they're heaps better for handling a lot of corrugations because your oil does not heat up as much. And look at the travel, hey? Look at the travel on these shocks. Man, you know what? I just, this is like a dream for me. This is like the ultimate in caravan suspension and it works, mate. It does give this van such a smooth ride. I've had um, this little thing here is a GoPro mount. I have, I've had one on here looking at the suspension and it is just smooth as silk. I love it. This is the air tank. So when I said before about when you turn the compressor on, there's a pressure switch that fills this tank with about 150 pound of air. And that is what controls your airbags when you press the key fob up and down. So there you go. That's Cruise Master ATX. We'll swing in here. See that big disc brakes on it. So we've got a electric over hydraulic um, master cylinder or brake controller inside. And that comes down and runs the disc brakes, which if you haven't towed with disc brakes before, oh my God, it is next level. It is like so smooth. 
There's no drum slapping or squealing dusty drums, you know what I mean? Like it is just next level. Yeah. So I'll show you these airbags. These are the ATX airbags. Now there's a couple of different sort of airbags in suspension because if you get the XT, you get like a bellows style airbag, whereas this one is a rolling sleeve. So what these do is that it doesn't matter how much pressure you put in this airbag, it retains its ride quality. With the other ones, with the bellows, they, uh, they get stiffer the more air you put in them. Same as the, like, the sort of the ones you put in a leaf spring ute, you know? So this one here, we can jack it up, lift it to its highest ride height, and it's still gonna have the super soft ride quality that it's meant to. Anyway, I love it. I get under here and I look at this thing, and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm in Caribbean heaven. <laughs> All right, I'll crawl out and I'll say goodbye to you. Hang on. If we can make an edit. You know, one good thing about having this big off-road band is it's pretty easy to get out. You can crawl in and out of it pretty easy because it sits so damn high. Anyway, I'll get the miso and we'll say goodbye to you. You coming out, dear? We'll say goodbye to everyone. Yeah. All right, out you come. Come on, come on kiddos. So there you go, that is our Sunseeker Desert Storm, the external tour. Hope you got some good info out of that and you might be able to plan your own off-grid, off-road capable van, you know, because this, to us, this is the ultimate beast. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, feedback, hey, for this one too. If you haven't seen the interior of Ed, uh, swing back for a couple of vids and we did one, didn't we? So you'll be able to find out what's inside this van and get an idea of that as well. But thanks guys, we appreciate your support. It's great to have a loyal audience that loves the vids. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification thing and check out the link for all the products and discounts because we want to help you guys out in any way we can. Cheers, eh?